All right, and we're live. All right, guys, today's video is going to be a doozy. Today, we're, uh, I joined a few Facebook uh, antique groups, and um, I'm just doing a few of these videos for them, basically, just to show them kind of the stuff I got. Anybody that knows me knows I love antiques, old stuff, anything like that I love. So anyway, this is one of the things I have. This is my Revere 85 uh, 8mm projector. This one actually was my grandfather's. He used it for, uh, you know, back with my dad and, and my uncles and aunts were all young to play their movies. And it's it's a beautiful piece. You know, I couldn't let something like this go. Um, I love stuff like this. I just want to show you guys what I have. Uh, this is the Model 85. I believe the company started with a Model 80. Then they had a Model 85. I think there was like a Model 90 or something in there as well. But anyways, this was, uh, Revere was like a budget projector company i guess you, you could have a budget people can afford it can have it at their home budget back in the 1940s and 50s did not mean cheap or inferior products believe me it was top quality it's very heavy it's a nice piece but it was just affordable um this particular one is in great shape um i got the instructions with it uh it came with this this was the case for it you know it went right over the top it was, that's how you stored it, that's how you carried it, it had locks on the bottom, I gotta clean it up, beautiful piece, it works pretty much good, a few things going wrong with it, but it needs to be oiled, uh, the light switch doesn't work, which I'll show you in a few, but this was a great piece, I, I'm trying to think of what I should tell you, the Model 80 was very similar to it, this was pretty much all the same, it didn't have the design fins on this side, I don't think on the 80, it was a little different, but this is just the updated version of it, but this is a, a great piece. Uh, I do, oh, also, by the way, I do have the old projector screen as well. It's not a Revere. I forget what company it is. I don't even know if they made projector screens, but I do have the old projector screen that he used as well. I'll do a video on that. But this thing was was quite the machine. Um, you would load the the movie up top or whatever, the film up here, and then in the bottom is storage for the lower part. That's the lower reel that you know the film goes into. Also, you if you were traveling, whatever, you wanted to make movies, you can store uh, an extra film in the bottom. I'll show you that stuff in a minute. But when you loaded a movie in, you would load the film down into here. There's a lock. Let me get out of the way here so you can see. Once you load the film through this wheel here, you would lock it into place. Actually, I think that was already locked into place there. And then uh, you would run it down through here. Then you would lock that in, which kept the film up against the glass and sturdy. And then you would root it through here, this lower wheel, and then that locked it into place. And then you would use that other reel that I showed you down here. You'd wrap it, you'd wind it into that, and then uh, play the, the movie. Then when you were done, you'd take it apart, and, and you would just rewind it. Which, that's where the word rewind actually came from, was you actually had to rewind the film onto a, you know, to the reel. Not like a... My childhood, when we were around stuff, it was on a VHS or something where you just hit reverse and it backed it up. But I mean, I guess you did rewind it, but I mean, back then you had to actually rewind it back onto the original wheel from this wheel. But let me uh, get my phone. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to give you some closer views of this thing. I'm going to show you a little bit about how it works. It does actually still work. I'll show you real quick. I got the cord right here all plugged in. One thing that doesn't work, though, is the light switch. You turn it on, you can't turn the light on and off, which I don't like because with these older projectors, if I remember correctly, you were supposed to shut the light off when you were done with it because they got hot, and I mean hot. When you turn this thing on, you feel the heat coming off it. It heats up the room. It's crazy, but you were supposed to be able to shut the light off and keep the fan running to cool the light down so it didn't blow out or break. Or That's my understanding anyways. It's got a little adjuster here, so depending on where you're, your screen was you can angle it up and down you know you had your uh your fine tune here you could focus it it's got a framer switch here which would actually move the picture up or down so it matched your screen perfectly but let me grab the camera and i'm going to give you a closer view of this thing let's just turn it on real quick first just so you can get a just get a listen to this sound it's a great sound all right turn it on it's got a fan speed here Actually, a motor speed, but fan speed as well. And when you turn it on, see, it needs oiling. It's going slow. I don't want to wreck it. So I'm not going to run it too much. But see, the light switch just doesn't work. But uh, it needs oiling. It needs a little work. I'm not going to run it too much because I don't want to ruin it. Like I said, the bearings are dry. They're old. This thing probably hasn't been serviced in probably 40 years. I, let me give you a closer look at this thing. 
Oh, by the way, you like my makeshift table? It's a box from my kids' toys with a blanket over it. But hell, it works. All right, guys, here we are on the business end of things. This is all your switches. You had, uh, this is your clutch to actually engage the film. It's got a, you know, a clutch. And it says it right there, clutch. Pretty wild. I don't know if you could see it or not. But that's what actually engaged the, uh, the motor to get the film going. You had a switch here for playing forward. You throw the switch to that side. That's how you were wound it when you were done. Uh, here's the framer I was telling you about. This switch right here. Don't mind all the stuff in the background. I got to clean this. This this is my basement, my storage area. The place is a mess. But this is where I was telling you where the extra reels went. You got that reel for the, that you it play it onto. You also could stick another one in there for, you know, stuff you were playing, like stuff you were recording, rather. Uh, it's got a lot of good features to it. It had, uh, here's your motor speed right here I was telling you about. Here's your switches for the motor and for the light. Now, the light doesn't work. Like I said, the light works, but this switch doesn't work. Whether you turn it off or on, the light stays on. I want to take it apart and fix it or maybe have it fixed. I just I want this thing working properly because I do have a bunch of old 8mm movies from my family. And, uh, you know, I don't want stuff like that to get lost. But this is an amazing piece. I love this thing. You turn it on. Runs great. Turn the motor up a little bit. Yeah, see, I say the light switch doesn't do anything. You look in there, the light just stays on. So that's unfortunate. I want to get that fixed. But, you know, you have it in forward gear. You throw the clutch. Yeah, see, it slows down. That's no good. It's playing too slow. Let me shut that off. I don't want to burn this thing out. I don't want to oil it. I want to service it before we uh, before we use it too much. This was the, the knob you saw from the other side for, you know, adjusting up and down. But just what a beautiful piece. It, it really was. Here's a closer look at the front where I was telling you about when you lock the film in, that locked it onto the top roller. This lever here, you see that piece moving back and forth actually holds the glass against or the uh, film against the lens, keeps it still. And then you had your lower lock, which is the same as the upper lock. But I mean, get a look at this mechanism. Let me hold this still for you here. What a beautiful piece. What craftsmanship this stuff had. You know, obviously, I'd say they don't make stuff like this anymore because there's no need for stuff like this anymore, but they just don't make equipment like this anymore. What a beautiful piece. I love this thing. There's the front of it. Here's the instructions I was telling you about. Pretty wild. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'll just show you a little bit. You know, it's got people right here building them in the factory. These were in the, the late 40s, early 50s. They made these. Here's some people on the assembly line. Look at these people. There's men and women working side by side for the first time. That's because the country just came out of came out of war recently, and 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 women were working since the war. And you know what a great time our country had back then. Here's the back of it. They got some other stuff. I think it's a picture. They had a slide projector. You could put slides on that and then put it on the wall. You know, look at your family and whatnot sledding with the kids and waving, all happy. No hats. <laughs> but, I mean, just what a beautiful piece this thing is. I love this thing. This is one thing I'll never get rid of. Um, I do have a Super 8 millimeter projector, which my movies are on from my childhood. Uh, let me give you a view of that. Look at that. The Emblem Malone, that, that's metal, you know? They don't make stuff like that. would be a sticker on something new these days. But, like I said, I do have a Super 8 millimeter projector as well. I have... Uh, a slide projector. I got a bunch of really old, cool stuff that I want to make some videos of and put on a couple of the, uh, turn that down. I want to put some of these videos on a couple of the, the antique Facebook sites so people can enjoy them and just really see what we have. But basically that's it. I just wanted to give you a quick view of this thing. Um, I really like this. It's, I like antiques and this is just a beautiful piece. I really wanted to showcase it, let people see it. And I, I'm going to service it. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to make it work properly. It does work like you saw, but I want to make it work properly the way it was built to work. And uh, that's it, really. Just thank you for watching. And if you like stuff like this, like, subscribe. So I know that people like it. And if, if I'm getting likes and subscribes, I'll make more videos with more antiques. And I'll just keep posting them. And, you know, thank you for watching.